What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to another factoring question. So we gotta factor each of these expressions here if it is possible. So notice these are a little bit more complex than the previous videos, there's more variables here to deal with. So let's start off with part A. We got 12x cubed y minus 18xy squared. So let's first start off with the constants, 12 and 18 what would be the greatest common factor between those? Well, it would be six, right? Six goes into 12 and 18 smoothly. So we could definitely take out a six from both. Now let's go to the variables. So notice that both expressions have an X, but what we wanna do is we wanna take out the variable or the lowest exponent, that variable to the lowest exponent. So we got X to the three, X to the one. One is the lower exponent between those two. So we will just take out an X. And then over here we have Y and Y squared. The lowest exponent between those two is one. So we would just take out a Y to the one. So six X Y ends up being the greatest common factor between those two expressions. So what would be left in the bracket? Well, we could just take both of those expressions and divide it by that greatest common factor that we are taking out. So over here, 12 divided by six will give us two. Notice the y's cancel out, x to the three over x to the one. You subtract the exponents, we'd be left with x squared. So over here, we'd have two x squared. Here we have a minus, so this would be minus. And then over here, 18 divided by six would give us three. The x's cancel out, y to the two over y to the one. Subtract the exponents here two minus one would give you one. So we'd end up with three Y right there. And that ends up being the final answer. And then you can do a couple of checks. Number one, see, can you factor this expression further? Two and three, can't factor anything out of that. And then notice we have an X here and a Y over here. So we don't have the same variable in both expressions. We don't have an X here we don't have a y over here. Okay, so you can't factor that any further. So we could be pretty confident that 6xy is the greatest common factor. And then another check you can do, you can expand in the bracket, make sure you get the original expression. And notice that you would, if you take 6xy uh, multiplied by 2x squared, you'd end up with 12x cubed y and then if I take this, multiply it by negative three y, we would end up with negative 18 x y squared. Right, so a couple of different checks that you can do. Moving on to part B, nine x cubed y squared minus 15 x to the four y squared. So greatest common factor between nine and 15 would be three, right? Nine divided by three is three, 15 divided by three is five. So that works. Now notice that there's an X in both. So we would take X to the lowest exponent, three is the lower exponent between the two, Y to the two, Y to the two, it's actually the same thing. So we would just take out a Y to the two. So what would we be left with? Well, on the side, let's take those original expressions, divide it by what we are taking out. So nine divided by three is three. Notice the um, X threes cancel out and the Y's cancel out. So we're just actually left with a three over here. Okay, this expression divided by this is just equal to three. Then we have a minus right there. And then what is 15 X to the four Y to the two divided by the common factor that we took out? Uh, yeah, like that. So 15 divided by three, five. X to the four over X to the three, subtract the exponents, four minus three is just X, is just one. So X to the one, we could just leave as X. The Y's cancel out, the Y to the two over Y to the two. So we're just left with a five X over here. All right, so that ends up being the final answer. Notice you can't factor this any further. So that is the greatest common factor. And then doing a check, expanding in, you should end up with that original expression. Moving on to part C, 2x squared y to the three minus five z to the power of four. 
So let's start off with the integers, 2 and 5. Any common factor between those? No. And then notice that over here we have x and y, but over here we have z. So we don't have common variables in both expressions. There's no x or y here, and then there's no z over here. So overall, we can't factor this any further. So this here is not possible to factor. Moving on to part D, 48x to the 3, y squared, z to the 5, minus 12x squared, y to the 3, and z. So again, let's start off with the integers, 48 and 12. What's the greatest common factor? Notice it's going to be 12, right? Because 12 goes into 48 smoothly. It goes into uh, 48 four times. 12 divided by 12 is 1. 48 divided by 12 is 4. So 12 definitely works. Notice how x is present in both expressions. So which of the exponents is the lowest? It's the 2. So we would take out an x squared, moving on to the y's, y to the 2, y to the 3. 2 is the lowest exponent. Then we got z to the 5 and then z by itself. So it's like z to the 1 between 5 and 1. 1 is the lower exponent. So that's what we would take out there. And what would we be left with? So this one, there's a lot of variables to work with. So just be careful with your steps here. So let's divide this by that greatest common factor. Uh, sorry, give me a sec, y to the two and then z like that. So 48 divided by 12, four, x to the three over x to the two, subtract the exponents, that would give us x to the one y to the 2 over y to the 2, those just cancel out. z to the 5 over z to the 1, subtract the exponents, we'd end up with z to the 4. So we'd have 4xz to the 4 over here. Notice that there's a minus over here, so we would put a minus. And then taking 12x squared y to the 3 and z over this 12x squared y to the 2 and z dividing by that greatest common factor we're taking out. Notice the 12s cancel out, so we're just left with like a 1 there. The x squares cancel out. Notice the z's cancel out. And then y to the 3 over y to the 2 would just give us y to the 1. Right? So it's just equal to y. So this would be minus y like that. And then notice from here, can't take anything out. So that is indeed the greatest common factor. If you want to do a check, if you want to take this expanded in the bracket, you should end up with that original expression. Now moving on to part E. So we got 39xyz minus 13x squared y to the 3 plus 26x to the 4z to the power of 2. So again, starting off with the integers, 39, 13, 26. Notice common factor between all of those, the greatest common factor is 13. 39 divided by 13 is 3. 13 divided by 13 is 1. 26 divided by 13 is 2. So 13 we could take out. Now let's go to the variables. So let's start off with x. So we got x to the 1 over here, x to the 2, x to the 4. So x is common in all of them. So we could definitely take out an x and we would take out x to the lowest exponent between all of them, which is x to the 1. So that's what we would be taking out. What about y? We got y to the 1. We got y to the 3. But over here, notice that there is no y variable. And in order for you to take out a variable, it has to be present in all of the expressions. So it's present in these two, but it's not over here. So it's not a factor that we could take out from all of them. And then z, notice we have z here, but we don't have it here. We do have it here, but because we don't have it here, it's not present in all the expressions, can't take out a z variable either. So 13x actually ends up just being the greatest common factor we could take out between all of these. And then if I take these and divide it by 13x, uh, 39 divided by 13 would give us 3. The x's cancel out. We're left with yz. So this would be 3yz like that. And then there's a minus over here. So be careful with the signs. Notice how 
I like to just use, I like to put the sign over there and then just use the absolute value of that expression when I'm doing this portion over here. Because if you start putting signs, it could get, maybe you might miss something. I feel like it's easier to just put the sign there and then to just use just that expression when you're dividing by that greatest common factor. So 13 divided by 13 is one. X to the two over X to the one, subtract the exponents, we'd be left with X to the one, and then we have that Y to the three. So notice here we'd have minus X, Y to the three, like that. And then we got plus, so let's put a plus over here, then we got 26 X to the four, Z to the two over that common factor of 13 X. 26 divided by 13 is two, X to the four over X to the one is X to the three, and then we got that Z squared remaining up there. So that would be the last expression in the bracket. So we have two X cubed, Z squared, quick check, three, one, two, can't take out a factor from there. And then notice we have Y, Z here, X, Y here, and then X, Z here. So different combinations of variables. There's no X over here, there's no Z over here, there's no Y over here. So we can't factor out any other variables. So that is the solution right there. And then finally, part F, we got negative four X squared Y to the four plus six X Y to the three minus eight x to the three, y to the five. Now I mentioned this in the previous video, if I have a negative like this in front, you can rearrange it maybe and put a positive in front. But a couple of things you could do if there's a negative in front here, you could take out a negative value. So notice, let's forget about this negative for now and let's just look at the four, six and eight. Notice that a factor, the greatest common factor between those is two. But because there's a negative here, I'm actually gonna take out a negative too. You don't have to, you could take out a positive too. I'll show you the answer for that later as well. But uh, your teacher, if there is a negative in front, they may require you to take out a negative, which is basically just gonna change all the signs, but we'll get there. So we're gonna take out a negative two. Let's start off or let's move to the variable. So we've got X, 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 it's present in all, lowest exponent, one. Y to the four, Y to the three, Y to the five, three is the lowest exponent, All right? And if you're taking out a negative, then you know how when we were doing the last one, I said, just put the signs over here. Well, when you're taking out a negative, uh, it might be worth it to actually just divide, to include the signs when you're dividing, because then you gotta start switching up signs. You don't wanna slip up there. So. Let's include the signs here, negative four X squared Y to the four over negative two X Y to the three. So negative four divided by negative two is positive two. X to the two over X to the one, subtract the exponents, X to the one, Y to the four over Y to the three, Y to the one. So we'd be left with a two X Y over here. Okay, so just be careful with your signs right here and then over here I'm going to put positive 6x y to the 3 over negative 2x y to the 3 like that. Um, positive 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3 these cancel out these cancel out so we're just actually left with a negative 3 over here. Okay, so notice how all the signs are changing, negative to positive, positive to negative, because we took out a negative. And then we'll have minus eight X to the three Y to the five over that greatest common factor of negative two X Y to the three. Negative eight divided by negative two is positive four. X to the three over X to the one is X to the two. Y to the five over Y to the three is Y to the two. So we'd have positive four x squared y squared. Wait, what am I doing? Um, sorry, that was the original expression. Put it here. Right? So this factors into that. Quick check, two, three, four, no common factor you could take out from those. There's an x here, no x here. 
So we're all good there. Can't take out an X. There's a Y here, a Y here, but no Y here. So we can't take out a Y. All right, so this does end up being the greatest common factor. And if you are taking out a, ne taking out a negative, just because of all the sign switching, I recommend doing that check of where you're expanding. So if we expand it in here, negative two times positive two, negative four, X to the two, right? One and one, we would add the exponents. Three and one, add the exponents to get that four. Negative two X Y cubed times negative three gives us positive six X Y cubed. The variables just stay the same, the exponents. And negative two times positive four gives us negative eight. X to the two times X to the one gives us X to the three. Y to the two times Y to the three gives us Y to the five. Right, so that's one way to do it. Now, if you took out a positive from all these, if you keep that greatest common factor positive, everything's gonna stay the same here. It's just the signs are gonna change. So you're gonna have negative two X Y plus three minus four X squared Y squared. Uh, yeah, y squared like that, right? Because the variables aren't affected. You're still, it's just the sign is affected. So if you took out a positive two, this uh, positive turns into a negative, this negative to a positive, this positive to a negative. So you may see either of these solutions in your textbook. Your teacher may require one of these solutions. So just make sure you know what they want if there is a negative in front.